Hello, welcome to my next video in my playlist I'm calling Generalized Linear Models. This one is part two from a video that I called, you know, part one, the logistic log logit regression model, part one. In part one, we looked at the theory of why iteratively reweighted least squares works. And what we're going to do in this video is copy those equations that we used in part one exactly into this R program, run it in a loop, and then compare the results with what the CAND function GLM gets or obtains when we run it. Now, so the goal is to run iteratively reweighted least squares from scratch and compare it with R's built-in GLM function. This is uh, part one followed this video, Generalized Linear Models General Leak Function, exactly. And then there we did it generically, you know, for in quotes a link function. But then when we use a specific link function, then we can get into a little more detail. And that's what part one does. Now, I also have a video out on probit analysis, and I search for probit regression data. And a UCLA site came up that had a link to data for the probit regression. And we're going to use that for this video also. It's a UCLA site. And actually, they have some other examples I just uh, learned not too long ago. So here we load the data into my data. And we it is four variables. So admit, GRE, GPA, and rank, and then admit is the 0, 1 variable that we're going to try to predict using these three. What, and what I do is I take admit and put it in Y, and then I take the other three variables and put it in X, but I add a column of 1's to that, and that column of 1 is for beta 0, and then it's beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, and so we could look at that. So this is our data matrix. Now let's run logistic regression in R and look at a quick summary here. Now we're not going to analyze what each of these beta parameters mean and the, we're not going to look at the p-values. What we're going to try to do is use iteratively reweighted least squares to see if we match these estimates for the beta parameters and the estimates for the standard error. So in step one, we needed to estimate our beta parameters, and we, and we estimated them all to be zero. And W and G, W stands for a weight matrix, and we're doing weighted least squares regression, and so that's what that represents. And G rep is a matrix that we use in step two, and it's and it's a diagonal matrix. I, both of them are. And so you can see part one for a little more detail what those matrices represent. So we estimate eta, but since B, or beta estimates, are zero, eta is going to be zero. And we can run that and, and show you. So all our estimates are zero. Then we come up with an estimate for mu, our mean. And P logis is the CDF function for the logistic regression distribution. And it's centered at zero. So when we put in zero into a CDF, it should be 50%. And so all our mean estimates right now are 50%. And then we want to fill this diagonal matrix Z with 1 over the density of our logit of eta and this is uh, part of that's the derivative of the link function and and or, and so that's where this comes from and again more detail uh oh what did I just do more detail in uh, part one for that I minimize it. So, and then Z, that's that's our dependent variable in our iteratively reweighted least squares, and it's eta plus 
G times Y times mu. So this is matrix notation. And then to set up our weight vector, it's again, or a weight matrix, it's also diagonal by this. And this is the squared of the derivative of our link function and divided by the uh, variance function. So let's, let's actually run those. And then, then we estimate beta using this. So what we did was come up with initial guesses for our weight matrix and then Z, which was here. And now we run it until convergence. And I actually don't have in here any criteria convergence or anything like that. I just run it 20 times and, and, and be done with it. So now this is our estimate for our betas. And this is an estimate. It turns out that this piece right here ends up being the covariance matrix for our betas. And the standard errors for our betas are the diagonal elements of that squared. And so that's what this piece does is it's finding the um, standard errors of our betas. And I skipped this step because that would just print out the beta coefficients that we compare with B, but this summary statement, we kind of get both in one statement. So here's our, here is the model, our logistic regression model. We take a summary, but we only want the coefficients for the model. And so these are our beta estimates from the built-in function. And this, these are the beta estimates that we use in iteratively reweighted least squares and notice that they're exact almost, you know, to so many decimals. And then the standard errors associated with our betas, this is from the iteratively reweighted least squares, and then this is from the built-in function for, you know, uh, R, the GLM. And notice that those are exact. Yep. Well, that's all I have for today. I just wanted to illustrate the iteratively reweighted least squares for logistic regression and show that it is and does match the built-in function for R. So I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Uh, please like the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And we'll see you later. Thanks. Bye.